रोग विजोग दे Our planet has a huge number of habitats and forms of life. Some parts seem to be without the possibility for life. Desert steppes and mountains over 3,000 meters seem to make living impossible. One animal is specialized in those regions, the camel. But how can it survive in those areas? When you hear the word camel, you probably think about the light to dark brown animal with two humps. But there are some more animals that are part of the family of the camels. The family of the camels is partitioned in two parts. On one side, the old world camels with the camel or bacterian camel, and the dromedary with only one hump. On the other side, the small relatives consisting of the llama, vicuña, alpaca, and the guanaco. They are the New World Camels, which is another part of the camel family. Both groups are living on different parts of the earth. The Old World Camels are living in big parts of Africa, Mongolia and Australia. The New World Camels are populating regions in the western part of South America. Back to our first question. How can they survive in those hostile regions? The Old World Camel has one or two humps is a mammalian and can weigh up to 700 kilograms. Its normal food consists of plants, but in emergency situations it is able to eat everything, even the clothes of its owners. Its body has adapted to its habitat in an almost perfect form. Fully laden, it's able to work up to 30 miles a day. To protect itself from sand, it has very long eyelashes and hairy ears and it has the ability to close its nostrils. Furthermore, its upper lip is cleaved. The two humps aren't there for saving water like most people think. The camel uses them to save fat for drones. To save water, the camel uses its big stomach system. It has the ability to drink 120 liters of water in just 10 minutes. With that stock, the camel could survive two weeks without drinking water or up to 30 days without eating anything. To protect itself from sweating all the water, the camel can change its body temperature in an incredible range from 93 degrees Fahrenheit at night up to 105 degrees Fahrenheit during the day. Furthermore, the pelt protects the camel from drying out. During the day, it absorbs the sun energy and gets hotter than the ambient air, so the camel can give heat away. Another way to, for the camel to save water is to thicken its dejection and urine. Some people say that you could use the camel's dejection directly out of the camel as a material to keep fire running. In the African and Arabian world, the camel is still one of the most important animals. People use them to gain meat, pelt and milk. Camel milk is drinkable and you can even make cheese out of it. Further proof of the camel adaption is that there are camel farms all over the world, even in Madison. That brings us to the second group of camels, the New World Camels. Like its bigger brother, the New World Camel eats plants. All four kinds are crossable to each other, which makes it very difficult to say which one of them was the first. In this documentary, we are focusing on the alpaca. For that, we are going to visit a local farm in Madison, Ohio. The alpaca farm have and sent alpacas. As you can see, they're pretty friendly. Mm -hmm. um, as long as you work with them, um, they're kind of like similar like to a dog. Um, the more you work with them, the more friendly that they are. Um, normally, they're from South America, um, up in the high Andes Mountains of Peru, Bolivia, and Chile. Um, their their diet is is very um, low in the fact that we don't really beef these animals up. We want them to stay slim. So we feed them um, a, a grain, and it's only a cup of grain per animal um, per day. They also get hay. Um, mm. It's called free choice hay. They always okay. have the choice of having hay. So it's hay and grain. Okay. We share them once a year. They, their fiber grows a half an inch every month. So by the time it's shearing season, it's a good six inches. Alpaca fiber is the scales are all together, and so that's what makes it really nice and soft. Um, it's also a hollow fiber. Mm -hmm. It has a hole in the middle of it, which makes it very insulated, which makes it very warm for us. It's actually three to five times warmer than wool. 
So to have an alpaca sweater is like wearing a coat. Well, color-wise, there's 22 natural colors. Um, anywhere from the very whites to <laughs> what we call fawn, which is a light tan, to browns, to blacks, and then grays. They're in all 50 states, um, including Alaska and Hawaii. Um, the most concentrated um, is here in, in Ohio. Wow. Pack animals are llamas. They're bigger boned. They're twice the size, the, I shouldn't say size, but twice the weight. Llamas are usually around um, 400 pounds full size. Mm -hmm. Alpacas full size um, are anywhere from 175 to 200 pounds. So they're, they, like again, they look bony, or they look beefy because it's all fiber. Mm -hmm. um, once we shear them, they look like little stick figures and you swear up and down, it's not the same animal as what you started out with. But um, yeah, you'll notice once we shear them that they're very, very thin boned mm -hmm. and you just can't carry heavy things on them. How do they d adapt? Well, there's very certain characteristics about them. Um, one is their feet. A lot of people think that they're a hoofed animal, but they're not. They're actually a toenail animal, um, and they have a pad on the bottom of their um, foot, like a similar to like a dog. It's a soft pad, and that gives them the stability to be able to walk on um, cliffs and high mountains and not be able to slide. Um, and so that's that's kind of unique about them. Um, the other thing that they have is their um, teeth. They only have bottom teeth. Um, so when they um, eat, are eating the grass, they don't pull the grass all out by the roots. They only tear the grass. So you can see that some of the pastures will be way low, but they won't be completely all tore up, similar to like if you go into a horse farm. The other um, quality that they have is that there's no oils to their um, fleece. So um, if if they were to roll in mud, which they do like to do, um, or get hay on them, um, they will go and just roll into, well, in my barn there's crushed limestone, um, they'll just roll and they dry themselves off and it just falls right off. Um, like sheep have a lot of lanolin, mm -hmm. but these guys do not have any kind of dandruff or any kind of oils to their fiber. Camillids have a three-chambered stomach, um, not a four. Cows have four, but alpacas have three, or camelids have three. Mm -hmm. And so what that means is they can regurgitate their, um, yes, I'm talking about you. They can regurgitate their food. Um, mm -hmm. So it's kind of cool in the summertime, you'll, they'll all be sitting around and you watch them chewing and then all of a sudden they swallow and you see this big lump going down. And then a few seconds later you see it all come back up and they start mm -hmm. chewing again. There's actually three different kinds of spits and it's, it's kind of um, neat to, t to tell people because they think when an alpaca spits, it's similar to like what you see on TV when llamas spit. You know, you get that all gut, you know, stinking spit. But there's an air spit and in their pecking order, um, they put out an air spit first and that's just a warning saying, hey, you know, I'm, I'm not liking something. Um, then they'll also have a, a wet spit um, it's mostly just saliva kind of spit. And then it's the all out gut spit that really smells. It's the acid in their stomach and their, um, that they'll um, bring it all up. And that's what llamas do. And that's why you get that real stinky, you know, gooey kind of spit. But there is three different kinds of spits. They only have bottom teeth. They do have molars in the upper and lower in the back that they chew um, from, but in the front they only have bottom. And as they, um, from the time they're creas, their teeth can consistently grow. But here we don't have that, so we actually have to file their teeth. <laughs> दे गयो यार सोगता